thank you for tuning in this evening. I'm Pastor Barry Bedwell from Faith Baptist Church in Canton, Michigan. And I hope that God is moving in your heart during this difficult time in which we live, that you're allowing him to minister to you in this difficult day. One of the greatest ways that God speaks to us is through his word. So it's a privilege once again for me to preach from the infallible, inerrant, inspired words of God. And so get your Bibles out this evening. Open up to a passage of scripture that you may never have looked at before. You may have never heard a sermon preached on this. I don't know. It's found in the book of Ezekiel. And much of what is mentioned in Ezekiel is prophetic. However, this chapter, chapter 14, deals with the current situation in Ezekiel's time. The children of Israel had gone away from God, as many times they did, and Ezekiel is, is preaching to try to bring them back to a good relationship with the Lord. However, they had gone far away from God. They had delved into idolatry, paganism, and instead of worshiping the true God, Jehovah. And so you remember in the story of Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 18, He's trying to get his nephew Lot out of the cities there of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so Abraham is interceding and he says, God, if there's this many people that are righteous, will you spare the cities? And then he gets down to 10. And, and God is, is willing to do that. And yet there are not 10 righteous people in all of that land at that time. And so Lot takes whoever he has there that he can get with him, not just his, his wife and a, a couple of, uh, of his daughters, and they take out uh, to flee from the city of, of Sodom, and God destroys the city with fire down from heaven, and they just barely escape. And so there weren't very many righteous people in those cities in, during that day, but also when we go ahead about 1,500 years to the time of Ezekiel, there weren't anybody much that were, that were godly people around anywhere except it is basically Ezekiel. And so can you imagine the task of trying to preach to people that did not want to listen, the, to a people who were rebellious, and he, he would preach and preach and preach and preach. And he, he tries to be like Abraham. He says, God, spare, this, spare our nation. And God says to him an interesting thought. He says, hey, if, there, if these three righteous people were here with you, I still wouldn't spare the nation because they've gone too far. Well, who were those three people that God placed in the spirit and mind of Ezekiel to record for us. Uh, who would God single out of all uh, of history that would be some special people of righteousness? Three men who stood out, and that's the message that I want to bring to us this evening, is how to be an outstanding Christian, how to be outstanding individuals for God. And so we look at three men that God mentions. I don't know who you would think of, and there are many good righteous people of faith throughout history. And this would have been before Christ in the Old Testament from the beginning to about uh, 600 or so BC. And so for a couple of thousand years, the mind of God scans through the pages of time and mentions three men. I, I know there's a lot of good favorite people you may have in the scriptures. Uh, there uh, was Moses, uh, Abraham, and uh, Joseph, and 
just several good people, but God brings to our minds three other men. And I want to look at what made them special and what made them to stand out or be outstanding for God. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14 says, Though these three men, here they are, Noah, Daniel, and Job. Noah, Daniel, and Job. God says, though these three men were there with you in, in, the, in, in Israel right now, he said, though they were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. And so what God is saying is that, hey, Ezekiel, I'm not going to spare this nation at this time. They're going to go into to bondage and captivity. Why? Because they're the God, the, because of the ungodliness and the paganism of everyone else. And if these three men were there, they couldn't pull the nation back together. Even Noah, even Daniel, and even Job. So no wonder God sent Israel into Judah, into captivity to the Babylonians. They were away from God. They had rebelled against God. And here, Ezekiel has to deliver the message that, you know, you're not going to, God knows you're not going to turn back to him. And so it's inevitable that you will be judged for your sin. And so, first of all, here are some things that these three men had in common that made them outstanding believers in the Lord. First of all, they all faced great adversity. They had problems and difficulties uh, seemingly like no one else had ever had. Noah, he lived in a time when God's spirit was not going to always strive with men because every imagination of their thought was continually just to do what was evil. And so God looks down upon the earth and said, I'm going to destroy all flesh from off the face of the earth. And so Noah faced adversity. He faced global, worldwide adversity. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God went on, as we know, to destroy mankind from off the face of the earth. Matthew 24, verse 38 and 39 says, For as in the days that were before the flood, what was happening? They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood, until the flood came and took them all away. Of course, they were taken away in judgment for their sin. And so this was a, a great time of adversity that Noah faced. To preach to people that would not listen. Daniel, likewise, was a man that faced adversity. Only he did not, not face global adversity. He faced what we might say as being national adversity. Daniel was a young man of God, and he was transported, taken out of Israel into a foreign country to have to learn a new language and to learn new customs, and many of these things were pagan in nature. And so he had to make some decisions. He was faced uh, with his people being uh, transported uh, from their uh, temple and from their home and leaving everyone to, to go into, we might say, slavery, bondage for 70 years. So the nation of Israel was destroyed at that time. And Judah was taken into captivity uh, under Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. God judged Israel because of their idolatry and their rebellion, because he is the one that had established the nation in the first place, and they had turned away from him. God had warned them 
over and over and over again that they needed to change their ways and repent. Then finally, judgment came. So finally, under the days of Noah, we find that the flood came, the great deluge. And then during uh, Daniel's time, judgment came. Many people were, were slaughtered and killed by the Babylonians, and captivity judgment came. In Daniel 1.1, it says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. Well, then we have Job. Job did not live during a global adversity, you might say, or a national adversity. But his time of trouble was an individual type of adversity. He suffered so much physically, emotionally, and mentally. He went through much pain and anguish. His world was not destroyed by the flood or a foreign country. And yet Job himself was attacked spiritually and physically by Satan himself. He suffered so much pain that his whole body, in a sense, was like one big sore. His friends refused to stand by him. His wife was upset with him. And he suffered loss of his finances. He lost his family. Many, all of his children died. And so you might say the stock market came down crashing in his life. And then in verse 13 of chapter 2, it says, Job 2.13, So they sat down with him upon the ground. These were his supposedly friends. Seven days, and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him. For they saw his grief was very great. His whole life was in a state of devastation. But it wasn't really because of Job. This wasn't a judgment that was coming upon him like the judgment of Noah's day or the judgment in Daniel's time. But this was a test. This was a trial that he was going through because of the questioning of Satan, whether he would serve God or not. There's something about going through great adversity. And the psalmist tells us that we get closer to God through adversity and that he was glad when adversity came that he might be closer to God. Well, they had to make decisions. Adversity forces us to respond. Well, we have been faced with an adversity. We're going through it right now with this global pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19. And uh, we're having to make decisions on what we're going to do. And sometimes these things are very difficult. God wants us to stand out in, as people of righteousness, doing what is right and pleasing to him. And again, Ezekiel in Ezekiel 14, 16, it says this, Though these three men, it says it again, it emphasizes it again, Though these three men, who were they? Noah, Daniel, and Job. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, he said this, this is the way it's going to be. They shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, they only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. And so he's saying, even if you had these great men here with you today, it wouldn't matter. Uh, they had, in a sense, become immune to the word of God, immune to faithfulness. And so he singles these men out again. They had all been faced with great problems and adversity. And then secondly, they, had, they all had a great disadvantage. They didn't have anybody really much with them to help them. When all the people of the world perished in the flood, it was only Noah 
his wife and their three sons and wives who survived. Well, that's not many out of probably thousands of people upon the earth at that time. 1 Peter 3.20 says, Which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Notice, the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, <laughs> few, that is, what was few? Eight, eight souls were saved. By water. A uh, few is a small number. There were only eight. Can you imagine? Uh, only eight people. Seven others besides Noah. Uh, to help him. To go with him. So the odds were against him. He was in the minority, you might say, of the world in his day. And so he had a great disadvantage to deal with. And so did the other two that are mentioned here. It was only Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we know of that were able to stand up and, and be outstanding believers there uh, during the Babylonian captivity. Of all the thousands of Israelites that had been transported or deported into Babylon, these four are the ones that, that, were, that are mentioned. Only three others, and Daniel. And so once again, he was at a disadvantage. Daniel 1.19 says, And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These were their names that were changed. These were their new Babylonian names. Therefore stood they before the king. And so it was a minority. They had to stand up against Nebuchadnezzar in his nation. And then Job stood out in his day. There was none quite like him. Job chapter 2 verse 8 says, And he took a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. It, it seemed like no one was there with him. He went outside uh, of, of his city, his town, and he just sat down in an ash heap, began to scrape himself with pieces of pottery. And nobody was there. Wife really wasn't there with him. His friends, they came and stood off and far off, and, and his children were gone. He seemed like he was all alone against the world. Maybe, maybe that's how you feel this evening. You may wonder, does it matter? what I do anyway. Nobody seems to be going with me or siding with me. And, and that's how Elijah felt uh, in the Old Testament. He said, oh, there's no other prophets. Uh, everybody's gone. I'm the only one left. And so these three men here didn't think about it that way. Even though they were in the minority, they kept on pressing on for God. And so we see that these three men all faced great adversity. And then they had a, a great disadvantage in that they seemingly were by themselves just pretty much. Look with me in verse 18 of Ezekiel 14. It says, though these three men were in it, he says it again, uh, Noah, Daniel, Job. He says, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. So this is re-emphasized over and over and over again by God that if, if these three men were here, they couldn't take care of all the, the problems. You might think of men of the past. If we had them today, well, maybe our country would come back to God. You know, Billy Graham and, and Spurgeon and Billy Sunday and, you know, you know, all these great preachers. If you had them all at the same time, would it make a difference? Well, he's telling Ezekiel, not in his day. It wouldn't change the nation. They had great adversity, these three men did. They faced great problems in their time. They were at a great disadvantage in the minority. And then number three, they all had great faith. When God looked down upon all the people who had lived on this earth, he saw these three men 
as men of great faith. And so when God told Ezekiel to cite three men out of all history, he mentions two that were hundreds of years before him that he had never seen, never met, but no doubt knew about for sure. And let me just say this. A lot of people even doubt the existence of Job. And they question the reliability and dating of Daniel. And I'm sure, surely a lot of people today in science and whatever, they deny the book of Genesis and the accounts in, in the Noah and, and the ark. And, they, and so these... These three men here are questioned by a lot of people today, skeptics. But yet these are the three men that God says are, were genuine people and they stood up for God. Well, he mentions one in his generation, one of his contemporaries, and that was Daniel. Ezekiel and Daniel lived during the same time. Genesis 6, 9 says this about Noah and his faith. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. He stood out among all the people of his day. And it says that Noah walked with God. It was just a few weeks ago, I preached on Enoch, who was a man who walked with God. Noah was his great-grandson who walked with God. And so he, he was a man, Noah was, that had great faith. He had to have great faith. He had never seen it rain before. He never built a boat before like this. And he, and he kept at it for so long and, and just trusted in God that God would lead him in the right direction. Hebrews eleven seven in the great chapter of faith in the Bible says this about Noah. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, <laughs> he had surely never seen it rain like that before. Some people believe that he had, it had never rained, that God had just watered things from beneath. And so he didn't know about that, didn't know what a flood was going to be like. He didn't know about building uh, this kind of a boat, this structure. It says, as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the saving of his house. And so he was a man of faith that did what God asked him to do. For 120 years, he was faithful to God. Then Daniel was a man of faith also. In Daniel 1.8, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Uh, he, he was a man of conviction. He was a man who trusted in God. And he would pray three times a day uh, toward God. And he, he did whatever he needed to do, regardless of what other people were saying. Uh, when they tried to shut him down, he stayed faithful. And he was a man that was full of faith, full of trust, when, when all others were against him. Job was a man of faith. Job 1.1 says there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. He was mature. He was complete. And it says he was upright, one that feared God and eschewed or hated evil. So he was a righteous man of God. In fact, it mentions these three men, God says these were men who were righteous in, in themselves as they trusted God. They were good men. They were faithful men. And that's what God says about them. What about your life? What would God say about you if he looked down at your life right now? Would he say, that's my man. That's my woman. Faithful to God. And they are righteous. They're holy. They are my servants. Would he say that about you? Would he say that about me? Something we need to think about. Then God says it a fourth time here in Ezekiel 14, 20. Though, here he mentions them by name again. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls. By what? By their 
righteousness, by their faith. And so they all had great adversity. They all faced great disadvantage. They all had great faith. Number four, this is, this is something I want us to think about here. They all got God's attention. God looked down and saw them, and he noticed them, and they stood out as strong believers in God. Genesis 6, 8 says this about Noah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace in God's sight. God looked down and saw him and knew him, and he got God's attention. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, it says about Daniel, it says, My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. So when he was thrown into that lion's den with these ravenous uh, lions who would have typically torn him to shreds and eaten him, the angel of God came. God noticed him. God took, took notice of him and came in his direction and gave those lions lockjaw and gave him a great deliverance. And so he got the attention of God. And then in Job 1.8, it says this, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him? Notice, God says this about Job. There is none like him in the earth. Anywhere at that time in Job's life, there was nobody like him. A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. He asked him that question. He asked, he asked Satan, man, this guy's faithful. This guy is, is uh, there's nobody like him. And so these three men all got God's attention. I wonder if we're getting the attention of God today. I wonder if our lives are making a difference for him. Genesis chapter 7 verse 13 talks about the victory that took place in Noah's life. Now, let me say this. Let me back up just for a moment. These were not sinless men. They had their issues. They had their problems. Daniel and Job and, and Noah ha had things that they had to deal with just like all of us. But let me say this. Another thing that they had in common was that they all ended up winning great victories for the Lord. Having great things happen in their lives because of their faithfulness. Genesis 7.13 says, And Noah removed the covering of the ark. He had been in there for a year. And he, he had... Um, took the covering off and looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And he got out later on and began to sacrifice unto God and God put a rainbow in the clouds. And so he was faithful and God protected him from the flood, he and his family. And after they got out of the ark, God says, go, go forth again, be fruitful, and multiply and replenish the earth. So God protected Noah and his family and gave them great victory. And then you find Daniel, Daniel 2, 48 says, When the king made Daniel a great man, he promoted him. He made him uh, his ruler, it says, and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole providence of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Well, God took Daniel and made him a great impact and influence in, in the society in which he lived, in the government. And so here he was worried about what was going to happen and being taken from his homeland and not knowing anybody much or having anybody with him. And yet God blessed him. God helped him to uh, cause uh, an impact in the whole government to be able to be elevated to a high position because he was faithful to God. And he protected him. 
And then we find that Job, in the very end of his life, also had a great victory. He had problems, yes, adversities, they all did. But God took their lives and blessed them greatly. In Job 42, 12, it says, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she-asses. And God, it goes on to say that God gave him more children. And so he had the children that he had in heaven and he had 10 more children and he had twice as much as, as he had ever had before. And so God blessed him in the midst of a difficult situation. Well, you know what? God can do that for you and me if we will take our adversity instead of uh, going away from God it'll, to, to allow it to help us move closer to God. And then, yes, even though we may be alone many times, we still press on. And then we have great faith in God. And then we know that God will look our way and he will, uh, we will get God's attention and he will bless us. That's the key of being a tremendous Christian, to be an outstanding believer for the Lord. And these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, stand out. Well, God wants you and me to be outstanding Christians, not mediocre, not just to go with the flow, to stand against uh, the crowds and, and the world and to be faithful to God. Let me ask you, will you be willing, are you willing to be one of those great men and women for God as Noah, Daniel, and Job? I hope you'll Think about this passage, get your Bible out and read it again, and allow God to do a great thing in your life. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, that's the first step, to accept him in your heart, to allow him to be your Redeemer, your Savior, to forgive you of your sins and to take you to heaven when you die, to be your Lord, to be your Master. And then we follow him in believer's baptism. And then we serve God. And we get into his word. And we follow him as he leads us. You think about all the things that happened to these three men. They, had, they were men of prayer. They, they talked to God. Noah said, God, what do you want me to do? And God gave him the plan. And he, and he carried it out. Uh, Daniel I'm sure we know he prayed, Daniel prayed, and he said, God, how am I going to handle the situation? They want me to do this. They want me to do that. What, what are you going to help me do, God? Show me the way. And then Job cried out, talked to God. He questioned God many times, but he was a man of faith, a man of, of prayer, and wanting to do what's right. I hope you are willing and wanting to follow God. And so let's get involved. Let's just don't be mediocre. Let's be outstanding for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for these three men that we have as examples in your word. Lord, that we need to be righteous and holy as they were. Lord, to be obedient, to be men and women of faith. God, to allow you to look our way, to bless our lives for your glory. Lord, for someone who's lost, I pray you'll convict their heart right now. And Lord, may they come to know you as Savior. Lord, help us to be men and women of God that will stand out to be outstanding for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Stay faithful to God, stay safe, and stay in the will of God. Hey kids, ask your parents to help you get online to watch Storytime with Pastor Dan every Monday. You can watch it on our Facebook or YouTube page. This week, Pastor John finishes up Chapter 1 of our study, The Message of James. Be sure to join him via Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Hey teens, every Wednesday, Pastor John and Miss Allison go live on the Rooted Facebook page. During this time, we share prayer requests, fellowship, and then Pastor John gives us a devotion through our series, A King's Ambition. We hope to see you there.
During these times of social distancing, God has opened the doors for us to send in our tithes and offerings using our text to give. All you need to do is text the word GIVE to 734-366-4996 and then follow the prompts. Along with this tool, we also have the option of giving online at fbcanton.org forward slash give or through the mail. Every Friday, Pastor Bedwell has been giving us a devotion from the book of Psalms. Join us this week as we find another word of encouragement from the psalmist. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week.